If you're using a combination of Microsoft OneNote and ChronoZoom in any of your classes for a project, this video kind of reviews the things that we talked about in class when we first introduced those projects. The first half of this video is going to take you through kind of a, a quick start or an overview of ChronoZoom. It's going to cover things like the user controls, navigation, how things are set up. The second half of this video is going to walk you through the things you need to know in order to start creating using ChronoZoom. Let's start with the general overview. This is the main ChronoZoom timeline. They've named it Cosmos. And up in the upper right hand corner, you're going to see the user controls. This is where you can interact with things involving your account or if you're creating something. You'll see your username here. Anywhere you see a pencil icon, that's going to let you create or edit something. There's a button for taking tours, and that's something we're going to get back to in a minute. And then there's a home button, and that's going to take you to this home page that is the very first thing you see when you log into ChronoZoom. ChronoZoom is generally set up with rectangles, boxes, or circles. All of these different boxes are timelines. So if I click into one of these, it's going to zoom in and out. I can pinch or zoom on my touch screen, or I can touch, just touch things in order to zoom. If I click one of the wider timelines, it'll zoom me out a little bit. Now sometimes when you get really deep into one of these timelines, as we're going to zoom in here, and you want to get back to that main timeline, it can be a little bit difficult. I can click my way out, or I can use the navigation area on the page. Up in the upper left hand corner, you're going to see what they call regimes, which are these main timelines on their big public timeline. And then right below that, you're going to see what they call breadcrumbs. This is kind of a path that you've taken in order to get to where you're at. I can't pronounce this one, but that's where we are. If I zoom out one, it'll take me to the next largest timeline. I can pronounce geologic timescale, so I'm going to zoom out to that. But let's say I want to go all the way back to Cosmos. I can click on the very first breadcrumb that I left, the first thing I visited, or I can click the Cosmos regime button next to the chrono zoom icon, and that'll take me all the way out. Let's zoom into the humanity timeline. A lot of zooming involved here. Humanity only a very small percentage of that Cosmos timeline. A few things you need to know, and some important vocabulary. Um, one would be timelines. All of these boxes are timelines. In fact, this humanity is its own timeline, and then within that humanity timeline, we've got other timelines. Here is mm, Mayan history. If I mouse over them, it's going to give me a, a pop-up title that tells me what it is. So I'll click on Mayan history. It'll zoom me in there. That's a timeline nested inside of this larger timeline. And you can see there's a bunch of other timelines in there as well. If I zoom into what is this one, pre-classic in the Mayan history timeline, I'm going to go to the next important vocabulary term that you need to know, and that's exhibits. Each of these circles is an exhibit. If I click on this one here, Mayan calendar, Inside of each exhibit, there are artifacts. Another important piece of vocabulary, artifacts. Artifacts are the things that are contained in the boxes within this circular exhibit. So here we've got one main artifact. It's got an image, and then it's got some text that supports it. If I click on another one, it will take me to the next artifact. Again, picture and text to support it. You can zoom back out by clicking on the exhibit itself and move to some of these other artifacts. Sometimes these artifacts are images, and in this case, you've got a video that's embedded inside of the artifact, which is inside an exhibit, which is inside a much larger timeline, which itself is probably inside of another timeline. That's why this tool is so cool. It's really allowing you to layer things, and that's going to be important later when we talk about jumping between timelines to make connections between concepts or simply to explore. And we talk, when we talk about those things, the term we use is tours. If I go out a little bit farther to, well, let's go to guided tours here. And again, this is on the main ChronoZoom timeline, so they've got a bunch of guided tours already created. We're already in the Mayan history area, so let's take the tour that's been prepared for that. It's going to zoom me out. Hi, my name is Carmina Murillo. I'm responsible for academic relations of postgraduate studies and research at La Salle University, Mexico. I'm going to pause it. Tours allow you to say, this is the timeline I want to look at, and this is the order I want to jump around to in that timeline or across different timelines. It also allows you to create a script 
and that's in this Mayan history area, the pop-up that comes out. And it allows for voice narration, which can be really powerful. You've got the text stuff that you add to each exhibit and each artifact. But then if you want to narrate a tour and tell a story, either within one timeline or across multiple timelines, this is the tool that allows you to do it. Let's watch a little bit more of this tour. We have made a study of the Mayan culture mainly divided in five periods and focused in the social aspect of this civilization. Zooming to the next stop. The Mayan preclassical period as a way to understand the starting point of what in its moment was known as the Empire of Kukulkan. Again, it'll zoom to the next stop after this uh, after the speaker is done narrating this part of the story. That's why we indicate the Mayan preclassical period as a way to understand the starting point of what in its moment was known as the Empire of Kukulkan, the narrative of Popol Vuh, the mathematical invention of the zero and the cosmic calendar whose precision describes almost perfectly the cycles of movement of the Earth. So I'm going to pause it there, but that's the general idea of a tour. This tour exists within one timeline, but it's also possible to jump around to multiple timelines to create your own tour. Those are the basics and a general overview of what you need to know to get started with ChronoZoom. The next thing we're going to look at are the tools and the buttons that you need to know about in order to start creating your project with ChronoZoom. Now we're getting to the things that you need to know in order to start creating using ChronoZoom. Many of you are going to be working in groups and collaborating on creating a timeline. That's a feature that hasn't been fully developed with ChronoZoom yet. It probably will be at some point, but ChronoZoom is something that's constantly under development and there's all kinds of new features being added all the time. That's one that isn't completely done yet. In a lot of your cases, you already have an account created for you or your class that you share in order to log in and collaborate on shared timelines. If you were working on your own, here are the things that you'd need to do to get started. Just very briefly, because most of you don't need to do this. From the main ChronoZoom page, you'd click on this little, the little guy that says sign into ChronoZoom, you'd have a little menu slide out and you can sign in, sign in using an existing Microsoft, Google, or Yahoo account. You can select any of those. If you were to click, say, on the Microsoft account, it would take you to this SkyDrive page where you can use an existing Microsoft account, or you can click sign up now for a new one in the lower right hand corner and that'll take you to this page where you're able to put in a bunch of information and you can use either an existing email address from any service or you can create a Microsoft email address. The other thing that you're probably doing if we've created a single login for you is building timelines within a larger timeline. We've created a timeline for this class called American Presidential Eras. Let me click on that and it'll take me to it. Here's the timeline that we've created. Because we have groups that are going to be working inside of the New Nation timeline, some working inside of this timeline, Civil War and Reconstruction, the Progressive Era, we have groups working within each of those timelines. If you were doing this for the first time and it's a project that you're doing on your own, you would need to create this big overall timeline first because all of your stuff needs to go inside of that timeline. You can always edit that timeline later using the pencil icon, but for now let's look at the timelines that we've already set up. If I zoom in on one like the Progressive Era, there's nothing in there right now. At the beginning of this video, I told you anywhere you see a pencil, you're able to edit or create. In this case, just like on that larger timeline, if I were to click on the pencil, a menu would slide out and I can edit this particular timeline. I'll click the X to have that menu slide back out. What I'd like to do is create a new timeline inside of this timeline. It's pretty easy to do. Up in the upper right hand corner, you're looking for the same symbol, a pencil. It's gonna pop another menu out that says create. Do you want to create a timeline, an exhibit, or a tour? I'm going to say I want to create a timeline just so I can show you how it works. Create timeline, and then it wants me to go inside of this timeline and click and drag an approximate area, doesn't have to be exact, that I think that timeline might live in. Then it slides out a menu where I can say uh, a title, give a title of that timeline. I can set a specific start time and end time. It can be a very specific date like January 15th, 1897, or I can say I just want to do a year and I can adjust here. If you click this drop down menu, you've got a bunch of options for how you want to categorize that year. We mainly are doing things in the CE and BCE eras, but you can go much farther back than that if you want. And if you want a timeline to go all the way to present day, you would select as the end time infinite and it would take it all the way up to today. At this point, I'm just going to select a year and I'm going to hit create timeline. 
So here's that timeline that if I click outside of this box, I've created inside of the progressive era timeline. So I'm able to nest timelines inside of other timelines. If I zoom back out, you'll see in this American presidential era's timeline, we've got a bunch of timelines inside of it. Let's go back to this one. The thing that's missing are all the exhibits and the artifacts that really make these timelines interesting. So let me go into this fake timeline I've created. And the next thing I want to do is create an exhibit. So I go back up to the pencil icon and I'm going to say I want to create an exhibit. It's then asking me to do kind of the same thing it did when I created a timeline. I need to click approximately somewhere inside of that timeline where I think this event or exhibit should live. I'll click right here, say 1900. And there's the exhibit. Exhibits are circles. So I can give the exhibit a title. I can give it a specific or a more specific date or maybe just a year. And then the one thing that I'm required to do is create an artifact inside of that exhibit. So I'm going to have to have some kind of text or image ready when I create an exhibit. I'll click Create Artifact here. And then it gives me a few options. Things with stars are required, like title, URL, media type, but other things I can add or I don't really have to, like description. Let's go to an example of a OneNote notebook that has a storyboard for a ChronoZoom timeline from a class that worked on this earlier in the year. I'm going to open it up and you can see on this storyboard we've got the exhibit, which are the circles that they've drawn, and then the artifact, which is inside a box. Here's the image. And then underneath it, it's the text that they probably want to add to the description. If I scroll left to right, you're going to see some other exhibits and artifacts that they want to add. So let's focus on these two. Now I know this time period doesn't match the fake time period we're working with, but we're going to go with it and just learn how to add things to this exhibit. Let me go back to ChronoZoom. I want to, first I want a title. Let's just put in a, a fake title here uh, like this. And we'll go back to the timeline and I'm going to put that title in. The nice thing about creating a storyboard as we covered with you when we first went over this, is that you've got everything in place and you're ready to go when you're actually creating the exhibit. There's a few things I can do to add an image or a video. I can import from Bing or import from SkyDrive. And let's say I select import from Bing. That just means I can do my searching for the image from within ChronoZoom itself. So for this particular one that we're working with, let's say we just want to type in this search term. Go back to ChronoZoom and I just want images. I can also select videos or PDFs. I'll hit search and here's a bunch of images that I can include. Hmm, this one looks a lot like one that I want to use, so let's try that out. And then notice that it puts in the URL and the source for me and it also gives it an attribution so there's a little bit of a bibliography or a reference for where I got these images. You're not able to upload your own images to ChronoZoom. You can put them on SkyDrive and make it in a folder that ChronoZoom would be able to access. But one of the ways that a lot of you are going to find as the easiest way to add images, let's cancel out of some of this, so we're going to, I'm going to delete some of this stuff, is to just find an image, and when you put it into your storyboard, like these students have, make sure that you have the URL. I'll copy this URL that we've stored inside of our storyboard, so we can see the picture we want to use, and we can see the text and the link. I'll go back to ChronoZoom, and I can just paste that in. So that's a direct link to the image. And then for the description, and again, I know this content doesn't match, but we're kind of faking it, so that's all right. I'm just going to copy the description I've already put in and paste it into the description area. If I scroll down a little bit, I then need to create, click Create Artifact. And now you'll see the artifact appear here. Okay, so there's a few things I can do. If I hit the X, whoops, this isn't saved. I haven't technically created the exhibit or the artifact yet. So I need to say, no, I don't want to get out of there, but I do want to say Create Exhibit, the button at the very bottom. So if I click that, I now have my first exhibit. And it's got a fake title, but here's my first exhibit. If I click on Bibliography, it's going to show me all the things that I've added and usually links to those things. Notice the pencil icons. That allows me to edit these things. But let's say I want to add another artifact to this exhibit because you can add a bunch of artifacts inside of a single exhibit. So I'm going to use the pencil button for the exhibit 
and it'll pop this menu out again and I'm going to say I want to create another artifact. And we'll go back to our OneNote notebook and let's find something else that we want to add in here. Here's a good one. I've got this image, I've got the link that I've already put into my storyboard. I'm going to paste that in in the URL field. I need a title so I'll go back to my storyboard and uh, I'm not sure what the title is here so we're just going to say this as our title. And then for my description again I'll go back to my storyboard, copy, and paste that into the description. Scroll down, I'll click Create Artifact, and there it is on the side, but remember it's not completely saved yet. I have to say Update Exhibit in order to save it. And now I've got inside of this timeline, which I'm zooming out, you see one exhibit. And If I mouse over it I'm going to see the title. I can click on that to zoom in. It's going to show me the main artifact and the text, and then if I want to move to the next exhibit, gives me a little thumbnail, I can click on that and it'll zoom me in. And then I'll be able to see the image and the text. Alright, so the only thing we haven't talked about are tours. And this is the thing that I, I think is the most powerful tool in Chronozoom. Let me zoom into humanity again. Big zoom. Into this little small timeline area. But what tours allow you to do are to specify stops along a route in order to tell some kind of story or make connections um, between timelines. So for example, let's say I want to explore the concept of immigration or disenfranchisement or another concept like that, but I want to do it across multiple cultures. The great thing about Chronozoom is it allows you to go along the x-axis and explore time horizontally, but it lets you go along the y-axis too and explore space on one point on the timeline. So if I look here at United States, let's click on that and see what happens. I scroll in here. I've got, you know, I don't have too many exhibits here, but let's say I want to do that. I want to say, all right, at 1991, down this line, what are all these things that happened that maybe I can connect a little bit to? So let's look at how to create one of these tours. Just like creating a timeline or exhibit, I would click on the pencil and I would say create tour. And I'd add a title for my tour, which we're going to say fake tour and a description of fake description, pretty original this morning. We then need to add stops. So I'm going to click add new stop and I need to click on one of these exhibits in order to add a stop. So let's say it's this one. All right, there's my first stop. And if I want to then create some text that I want to pop out in that window when someone plays the tour, I would create that text here. I can also add audio so I narrate my tour as we saw at the beginning of this video. That's another feature that's kind of under development. So what I'm suggesting for people is if they want to create a tour with narration, go ahead and write in this box what you would say. Create a little script along with your storyboard in OneNote and add it there. And then there are ways to kind of get around the fact that we can't put audio in just yet. So I've just put what I want in there. And now I want to say I want to add a new stop. Let's say I want to jump into this timeline here and I want to do this exhibit that I can't really see but if I were to zoom in there I'd be able to see it. And here's another place where I can type in there. And then I want to add a new stop. Let's go into uh, 1990s. I'm going to zoom in. I can zoom into a timeline and put that on my tour. I'll put my fake text in there. And I want to add one more stop, so I'll click Add New Stop, and let's say I want to add the birth of the internet. I scroll down, I can add my, my fake script narration text. If I want to reorder the stops on the tour, I just click and drag them up or down. When I'm finished and I've got things organized to my satisfaction, I can click Create Tour, and it will create that tour on the timeline for me. Again, it's a great opportunity to make connections based on a single concept across multiple timelines, multiple cultures, jumping around from one era to the next, or exploring along a single point on that y-axis, a single point on the timeline. Those are the things you need to know in order to start creating with Chronozoom. We've put a few additional resources into your shared OneNote notebooks that you're doing your, your research and you're collaborating on your storyboards and stuff in. So take a look at those or ask one of us if you want to explore a little bit more or you want to talk about some of the other features that are available to you.